Well, I think the first semester was traumatic. It was traumatic on almost every level. You know, I wrote a little blog post saying this was my 30th September, the 30th year of going back to school. Um, and uh, I wasn't walking out the door and I wasn't walking into meet new, a new group of students. And I found that very emotionally difficult, very emotionally painful, not seeing students. Um, I felt enormous empathy for their pain and, you know, for the, for the whole situation. And that first semester was, you know, kind of traumatic in many ways. And at the end of it, as I wrote in my blog post, you know, I, I had a little cry when, the, when I turned off the screen. The second semester was quite different. And I think everybody would say this, the old normal became the new normal and it became just normal. Um, and uh, I think that we all leaned in a bit more. Um, and we got used to the rhythm and the pace and the methods and so on. And humans are very adaptable and we had definitely adapted. And also, I think the other thing is that we weren't waiting for it to be over. We knew this is where we were at. So that was a huge difference. So the second semester was a very different experience to the first one. And I also changed the way I taught. Um, I had a lot more participation. I had a lot more guests. I had a lot more live um, because I was afraid that the content was dead. You know, I realized that what we were not doing was online teaching, but rather emergency teaching. And that distinction became very interesting for me to think about a bit more. The first semester was kind of, I was trying to be an online teacher and it's very difficult. That's a very specific skill set. Whereas the second semester, I was uh, prepared to mix up the way I did things, a bit more live, a bit more discussion, a bit more tutorial, small group, and so on and so forth. And I think we all, we all got on very well there. So it, it was a, a, a much less stressful experience for the second part of the year. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think we know. I don't think we really fully understand what's just happened, actually. I, I think that we'll be unpacking that, and I think we should unpack that. In fact, I'd like to see the HEA, you know, award some research funding, or I'd like to see us as an institution start to initiate some research, um, some kind of town hall, you know, how, what did you do? What do you think happened? I think it's worth unpacking the experience when we're all able to do it. Lots of things happened. I mean, we were able to teach in very different ways. I taught in smaller blocks. Um, you know, our pedagogies changed. We were on our own to a very large extent. Um, and that was a little bit difficult. And then, as I say, you adapt and get used to everything. So, and the other thing is, where does our content live? What is the relationship between our content and us as teachers? All of those kinds of ideas. I saw, for instance, um, you know, a, a newspaper obtained video of a lecturer. And I thought, well, where, from who, what's that about? Who owns that kind of thing? So there's interesting, you know, really serious questions there, but also, I think one of the things that the pandemic has thrown up is what is the role of the university? What does the university do that's distinctive and different from the online uh, kind of learning experience? And I think we need to recapture that and, and be, you know, I, and I, I feel very strongly that we do have a strong sense of that. But the idea that we can hand everything over to an online platform, I don't think is advisable, though we can learn things uh, and perhaps include them. I would say that one of the things I've learned most is that we can reach people who are not physically present. I mean, that's a very obvious thing to say, but it means that we can enrich our teaching through expertise, through collaborations with people in places that are far off. That's been a quite exciting development. And we've been able to run careers and, and guests from film festivals and so on and so forth, who we wouldn't have got to otherwise. That's been great. Last week, for instance, I had a, a seminar on the teaching of Irish film. I was able to call up people from Dublin, from the United States, um, from archives, and they were all able to assemble uh, with 50 other people online. And we were able to have a conference that took an hour and a half on a Friday afternoon at no expense, at no environmental cost, relatively speaking. Um, so th those kinds of opportunities are exciting um, and allow us to open ourselves out to the world. So I think that's very, very interesting. Uh, and I'd like to bring some of that forward. It's very difficult to know what's going to happen. I mean, we, we, one of the things that we decided to do, I think all of us collectively, was to follow the president's kind of advice, be kind. In other words, give everybody the benefit of the doubt every time. Um, so that meant that we had to be a little bit more relaxed with, time, with timetabling, perhaps, or a little bit more relaxed with uh, deadlines and so on. It also meant that we had to reach out to students a bit more. So we spent a lot of time responding very quickly and very often to students and student needs. That's new in a sense, you know, we're always careful and caring of students, but that kind of level of attention um, and, and response level is very uh, new. That's very labor intensive. It's very emotionally intensive. I think we discovered that we're not really qualified for aspects of that, even though we were the primary point of contact. Um, and we either need some training or we need to have better support services. But again, this was a, a unique kind of a year. What I found most difficult about this year was trying to get any research done and trying to separate those spaces when everything is on this small laptop uh, space. 
So what I did really was try to get up earlier, work till a certain amount of time in research and then try and break up the day. I never really did that before. So that was an interesting um, development. The other thing I really want to say is I think the leadership of the president and, and those kind of key words were really crucial. I think they set a tone um, and they set an attitude which I, I, I think really, really helped. And I think spread throughout the university community among staff, among students, and among support services uh, and administrators. And uh, I think in general, um, my experience of working in university was incredibly positive this year on account of that. The other group of people I would really like to single out are the class reps. They became incredibly important uh, as points of contact. And I became aware only recently, in fact, um, that one of my class reps had a Snapchat uh, group for his class and he would regularly check in on each and every one of the people in the class to see how they were doing and if he want if they wanted me to, to respond to anything so those people amongst the student community uh, were invaluable as points of uh, contact and communication well i think um, one of the things i think a lot of people would probably agree with is that it wasn't a single experience the the last year there were phases and cycles and you had good days and you had bad days. And I think the first part of it, I found very, very difficult. And um, the isolation, the social isolation, the intellectual isolation, I found extremely difficult. Um, and uh, like everybody having lots of dreams and sort of a sense of, a loss of a sense of purpose, um, all of that went away. I think possibly with the arrival of more light uh, and then, you know, better news about vaccine, uh, all of that went away and you kind of repurpose yourself. The, the length of the lockdown actually was quite interesting. Had it been shorter, I think our conversations and our sense of ourselves would be different. I, I'm actually happy it went on a bit longer because I actually got better and felt stronger as, as things went on. One of the things I missed was socializing and, and social interaction with students and realized that that's what I really like. That's what I'm in the job for a lot of the time. Um, I probably did more writing uh, because that was a main a, a replacement for socializing. So that was kind of interesting. I got more work done in some senses. Um, and the other thing I learned is that habit uh, is extremely important. You know, that in a way, um, habit is more important than willpower. That I, I couldn't will myself to do, you know, X, Y, or Z, or, you know, how many steps or exercise or whatever. But if I got into habits, they, they stuck. Um, and so I gently eased myself into a, a number of habits that were professional and also personal life. The hard thing really, I suppose, was uh, just walking down the stairs here every day, like leaving the laptop behind, taking breaks. I didn't do enough of that at all. Um, I worked too hard. I don't think it was healthy, actually, the amount of time I, I spent at, this, at the laptop. So I you'd have to change things if you kept going with that, you know. One of the comforting aspects of the pandemic was that everyone around the world was going through the same experience. That was a phenomenally exciting and supportive uh, bit of knowledge that my friend in New York or my other friend in Paris or people who I haven't heard from for years got in touch and we're all having the same experience. So there was a sense of commonality and common human experience uh, over the last year, which I found very encouraging and supportive. And that sense of time and space, I thought was very, very interesting. But I think to generalize would be perhaps to do a disservice to people who either weren't as privileged uh, as I was. I was I was busy. I had things to do. I had a lot to think about, which was great. But I'm also a certain age and I had certain job security and so on. Um, people at different ages will have experienced this event very, very different. And I think it'll be time before that unpacks people younger than me and people older than me, too. I see it in my own parents. So I, I would hesitate to generalize about human nature. Um, because this event has and continues to be experienced in quite different ways by different people. It would be really great if we could learn a little bit about how uh, fit, moving ourselves about the place is not quite as necessary as it once was and, and, and using our resources, all of our resources, in slightly different ways. Um, to take advantage of this technology and the tolerance we now have for it. So I, I'd like to see that. Um, and I think that would allow us, that would free us up uh, to teach in different ways, perhaps be in different places, perhaps teach different groups of people. The potential of the technology we haven't even begun to understand, I, I would really strongly feel. I mean, we at the moment we bring guests in from abroad, we realized that everybody could come you know, to anywhere. They didn't even want money, a half hour out of your day to sit on a screen, it really, so that's an enormous, extraordinary potential for us as a university, as it is for all across the, 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 the education world. So I think that, that technological potential is really, really exciting. Um, and we should be free and open. Uh, and experimental and how we might drive that forward.
the thing about the blog post was I wrote the blog post in about an hour one day. It was that day, the day that the teaching stopped. And actually it was a form of therapy. I mean, I didn't think it was therapy at the time, but I, I just felt a need to sort of say where I stood, say how I was feeling um, and record it. And, and, and it, was, it was a gesture of me trying to understand what had just happened. Uh, I don't feel that way this, this term. I mean, we all signed off yesterday, one of my groups, and uh, students said, thanks a million, that was great. And everybody was smiling and it was easy. And, you know, there was an enormous sense of positivity. The last semester, I didn't feel that way at all, you know.